Well, hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar, Standing Out from the Crowd. And this webinar is being sponsored by our friends at Emory. And I will tell you more about them in a little bit. But first of all, I want to see where you're all coming in from. Oh my gosh. Yes, say hello. Let us know where you are. Arizona, Florida, Virginia. Oh, Chesapeake. We used to live around that area. Tennessee, Canada. Woohoo! Yay. Welcome, welcome. I hope everyone is doing well and having a great summer. I am really excited about today's topic. Uh, it's very timely, and I will tell you more about that in a little bit. But first of all, I'm Joan Burge. I'm the founder and CEO of Office Dynamics International, in case you didn't know that. We are a global leader in the development and presentation of sophisticated training programs and information for administrative office professionals. And we have been doing it for 32 years. Woohoo! Yes, we love what we do and we love all of you. So, a few logistics. First of all, the learning part of our session will be about 40 minutes today. Um, I do have a really special announcement, a great surprise from our friends at Emory, and I want to make sure everyone hears that. So, I'm probably going to pop that in there before we go to QA. Uh, we're definitely going to have Q&A, so you could submit your questions at any time, and Malia will pull those aside, or you can submit them at the end. And I hope you have a lot of questions, really good questions for me, because I think we're going to have a hearty discussion, and I'm going to share with you some hardcore facts that may just surprise you. Um, what else? If you have any technical issues, of course, the only support we can give you is in the chat. Hopefully today this will run smoothly and uh, we won't have any issues. And we will send a replay link following today's webinar. So come in, come in, come in. Once again, I wanted to let you know about our sponsors today, Emory. I don't know if you remember, if you were at the last webinar we did, we had the CEO and founder on that webinar, Don Harms. It was wonderful. It was informative. We talked about strategic partnerships. Um, and I want to mention one thing. If, I, if I'm sharing resources with you or we, we are fortunate to have a sponsor from time to time, these are people I really, uh, who I really believe in. And I really believe in what they're doing and how it helps you as an administrative professional. That's why I want to share them with you. So very briefly, Emory makes software that is designed to help drive a more strategic partnership between executive assistants and executives. So that's, you know, that's the, the, uh, uh, the best description that I could give you. But I personally, um, it's a wonderful, wonderful platform, Emory, that will help you and your executive hold all your communications in one place, organize your follow-ups, your priorities, and the list goes on. Uh, but let's dig in right now into our topic, and then I'll tell you more later. So standing out from the crowd, I actually did this webinar in 2017. I believe it was the first time I did this topic. And it was a really good topic, so I wanted to bring it forward again. Interestingly, as I was reviewing what I covered in 2017, I realized and wanted to change 50% of the content. I realized that there had been a lot of changes um, just in the last two years, two and a half years, correct? So I ended up changing, like I said, probably 50% of the content to suit where we are today. So this is a critical topic. Um, and I have to tell you, I was even struggling with it. In other words, I started to think, why? Why should you stand out from the crowd? Why should anyone care today? And I'll, I'll explain that to you in a little bit. So uh, to position this, if we think about it, our workplaces have dramatically changed, right, over the last few years. A workplace is identified from anywhere, any place, any time. It's not necessarily a physical place we go to, um, as we used to refer to pre-COVID, correct? 
So the ability to stand out is more challenging. And if we have all these people working from home, which I'm curious how many of you are still working from home, how many of you are in a hybrid situation, the numbers are still huge. So how do you stand out? Why would you stand out? Who cares, right? So before I get to that, I wanna ask you this, and I'd like you to put your answers in the chat. What do I mean by standing out? What do you think? That means when I say stand out from the crowd. So if you'll share that with me next, you're still working from home, hybrid, hybrid. Okay. When you hear standing out, what does that mean to you? I want to be clear. I'm not talking about standing out from an egotistical perspective. Um, good, you're giving it, telling me, going above and beyond. Uh, oh my gosh, they're coming through so fast, I can hardly keep up with it. Adding value, what else? Being visible, yes. Being present, being a trusted leader, yes. Excelling, yeah. So when I'm saying stand out, it's really letting your talents shine. It's letting your gifts shine. It's not about pounding your chest, look at me, I am so, so great, correct? It's a very, it's a positive. Uh, like I said, it's not about ego. So I wanted to get that clarified first. Now, why is standing out important? I have some important reasons for you. So if you want to get your uh, notes taking device ready, here we go. So first of all, the number one most important reason why this is important is because we live in a world of uncertainty. Would you all agree with me? Absolute uncertainty. And so one thing I have noticed is that I don't think employees realize um, or consider what that creates in terms of when we're working from home, when we're working in hybrid environments. So we're in this world of uncertainty. We don't know things are going to shift from day to day. Many employees are working from home or only going in their office one or two days a week, correct? So the idea is it's a more sheltered life. It's more sheltered than when we used to go to the office or you used to go to the office all the time, every day you were very visible. So you're more sheltered. Well, what, what does that mean? I mean, have you ever thought about if I have this sheltered life, which is so great and I love it. And a lot of people love working from home more than they do going to an office, but what does it mean to your future? And that's where to me, a lot of employees are not thinking of how what they're doing today will impact their future. Why you need to think about that is because we live in an uncertain world, meaning the world you know today or the world that exists today with your job or your work or your role or who you support can change in an instant. It can change tomorrow. It can change in a year. You don't know what your personal situation is going to be. So if you're more sheltered or your work, you're not making it visible what you do, who you are, you know, letting people know your great gifts and talents, then should your world shift, they're not going to think about, let's say you <laughs> and, and help you through that transition. So I don't know if I'm making sense or not. If I am, let me know, please let me know if that makes sense to you. So I, I look at the idea is you have to pack your parachute. And I've always believed in that, even pre-COVID. You need to pack your parachute now. You need to let your talents shine. You need to stand out. You need to let your work stand out. We'll get to how to do that later. Right now, I want you to understand why this is so important. So it does make sense. It absolutely makes sense. Thank you. Yes, out of sight, out of mind, that's so, so true. 
So, and even if you're planning to retire in a year or two years, you still cannot rest on your laurels. You can't because you don't know what's going to happen over those two years. And maybe you won't be able to retire in two years, or maybe you don't want to in two years. You may find out that two years later, mm, no, I still want to go to work. I still want to contribute. I still want to feel you know, really needed in that capacity. So again, number one, the number one most important reason for you to work at standing out is because we live in a world of uncertainty. The number two, this is where I hope I blow your mind. The playing field is even. So what do I mean by that? Well, first of all, the majority of people are working from home again or in a hybrid event, correct? So we're pre-COVID, most of us were going to the office. There was an occasional so now we've got this even playing field again, where you've got a lot of people working from home, you know, maybe several days, uh, one day a week. Um, and I know there are some of you who have to be in the office all the time and are back in full swing, but not the majority of people. So the idea being you're not very visible, um, and I don't mean just physically, it's hard for your talents again to be seen. As far as the playing field, almost everyone dresses casual now. Where in the old days, pre-COVID, you know, dress mattered. It really did, like how we dressed. People who dressed up more for work, who had on more, you know, had more of a business attire on. And I don't mean full-blown business, but more of a, a business top, business slacks they visibly stood out well now everything's even casual seems to be the norm and very very casual seems to be accepted in the workplace which never would have happened so do you see the playing field is leveled and i know many of you love that stay with me an employee can work just about from anywhere, correct? We've all heard that now because we know we could work virtually, you can be working and you could be in another state and your boss or employer could be in another state, right? That provides a lot of great options for assistance and all employees. You can work maybe from anywhere. Well, also it's great news for employers because they can also look for employees from any state and not worry about just looking in their particular area. Isn't this great news? The playing field is even. The bad news is the playing field is even. Pre-COVID, office dynamics dominated the on-site administrative training industry. We started this in 1990. We dominated it. We were the ones companies were calling when they wanted on-site training for their assistance. Whether it was a one day, many of our clients were full-fledged training programs who we worked with for 10 years, right? We stood out, we dominated that industry. Then COVID hit. No more on-site training, no more. We immediately pivoted. We took all our curriculum, thankfully we had a ton. We converted it to virtual, live virtual classes, okay? Well, months later, so did every other person out there who wanted to, to give a class for assistance. There were speakers out there converting to virtual. There were hundreds of um, other individuals, you know, getting on board. Anyone could provide a virtual class now. Anyone can do a virtual webinar. Everybody's in this virtual world. The playing field is even, but you know what? It isn't even. There's differentiators. We are not even with everyone else, and I wouldn't even consider Office Dynamics even. 
we do have differentiators. We do stand out in the quality of work we do. We do stand out in that I'm the founder and I worked in your profession for 20 years. And I'm saying this because I'm getting to a point about you. Okay, so stay with me. So the last two and a half years, we've had to work harder and harder at communicating our differentiator. Why should you choose us? Well, it's the same thing for you. Going back to the playing field is even. There's tens of thousands of assistants working remotely, virtually, whatever you want to call it, hybrid. Most of you are not seen other than the days you show up at the office. Many are dressing very casual. Many are not talking to their managers or executives face to face, or they connect once a week or maybe once a month, or your, your executives are off and they're in their own little remote world. Do you see you have to work harder, much harder today at standing out. The third reason, so I'm still under why this should be important to you, and this is a big one. I don't know if you've heard of proximity bias. I started delving into this a few months ago. So let me explain it. As more companies embrace hybrid work models, many people, managers, and HR departments are dealing with what is called proximity bias. Proximity bias is the tendency for people in positions of authority to show favoritism or give preferential treatment to employees who are closest to them physically. Now this isn't right. And actually four out of 10 executives ranked this as a number one concern in companies. So they agree, they rank it as a problem. However, bosses are twice as likely to prefer working in the office at least three days a week, and they are more likely to promote people who work in the office, who come into the office more than those who don't. So that's another reason. It's a very hidden reason. It isn't right, but the truth is it exists. Proximity bias. Number four, another reason why standing out is important so you're not relegated to a secretarial pool. We don't wanna go back in time in this profession. I've been in this profession 50 years now and organizations are wanting to pool assistance, or it's called centralization. They want to centralize the assistance, which to me, it's basically a pool. Over the years, other companies have tried this and it doesn't work. They want to just put you all in together and, oh, you know, your talent is PowerPoint. So you're going to do all the PowerPoint presentations and you're great at project management. That is going back in time. We have worked too hard to be relegated to that. So you've got to stand out. You have to show that you're more than just that project manager, that you're a critical thinker, that you are a, an information flow manager. You have to work hard at this. The fifth reason is molding your career. No one is given the ideal career. I don't care what profession you're in. And I've talked about this for years. It's nothing new, but it's important now. It's even more important. You need to mold that career. So you need to step into what you want. But again, you, you also have to show people what you want. You have to talk to your key people that you support and let them know what you want. I mean, where are you heading after two and a half years? Are you still doing the same old, same old stuff? You know, falling into that comfort zone like many of us have. So the next is unceasing change. That's the next reason. Because things are constantly changing, right? Every day, every single day. 
Uh, number four, sorry, was not be relegated to a secretarial pool. Um, so then with number six, as far as on ceasing change. So here's another really good point. You might be changing and taking classes. I know many assistants are, and you're on this webinar today. But does your leader see how you're changing? Do they know? You know, there are assists. We've had hundreds of assistants attend our virtual world class assistant program, our certification course. They graduated, they've gotten their certifications. Now, many of them will have a meeting with their executive actor and let them know what they learned and how they're going to implement that into their workplace. We have assistants who have gone through our lengthy, lengthy star achievement series. So they put in a lot of time to learning and studying. But the point is, if, if you are the only one knowing you're doing this, you know, other than demonstrating your growth, how do your executives and managers see what you're doing? So you've got to figure out if you're doing all this learning, which a lot of people are have taken advantage of the last two years, not in person, but virtually, but they need to know what you're doing because that's how you stand out. When you show that you're continuing your education, that makes you a standout employee. So I hope all of that makes sense to you because now I wanna get into how are you going to stand out? What are you going to do to stand out? So are we good? I wanna make sure everyone is good. Number six, I'll go through that again. Um, number six was on ceasing change. All right, let's go on to the how. How do you stand out? And again, keeping in mind today's world is different. We've had a lot of changes, as I mentioned to you earlier. And sorry, I've got to clear my throat a minute. <clears throat> All right. So you have to be strategic. If you're going to stand out, you have to be intentional. It doesn't just happen. Strategy is the icing on the cake many thousands, tens of thousands of assistants have the skill to do the job. Tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands have a good attitude. They know how to work as a team. They work well with others. So what's your standout factor? This is where you have to be strategic. So strategy is about, first of all, taking ownership of your career. And if you have been following me, you know, I've talked about this many, many, many times to own your career. But what does that really mean? What does that look like to own your career? Any ideas? So I know we have lag time, it's going to come through. So I want to help you. Um, with this and owning your career, well, first you have to decide, you know, what you want your career to look like. In other words, when I started right out of high school, went into the secretarial profession, I knew I wanted to as quickly as possible get to the top and work for the top, a, a top executive, a CEO or a president. I knew it. I knew I wanted to move up and work for those top level executives, right? So yes, you have great ideas. Keep giving me your ideas. You're self-driven. You keep learning. You've got to know what your uh, goals are. It means to take control, right? You're not at the mercy of others. You don't have a pity party. Like, oh, woe is me. My company will not support my training. Or woe is me. There are no opportunities. We don't do any of the woe is me when we own a career. We're responsible, we're accountable, we take charge. We make it happen. And if we don't like where we are, you leave. I did that as an assistant. If I wasn't achieving what I wanted, 
Now, I know I make that sound easy, and I know you have to take into consideration your family and financial situations and so forth. But all I'm saying, you still have to take ownership of that. Okay. Um, manage your career like a business. I love that, Maxine. Yes, exactly. Perfect. All right, next strategy is about embracing a lifelong philosophy of success. So first of all, let's get success out of the way. Success, when I say success, I don't necessarily mean a lot of money. I don't. You know, success is what makes you happy. What, you know, what does success look like to you? You know, for us as an organization, here's a perfect example. We host an annual conference every year. This is our 29th year. We keep that event intimate. You know, we, I want it. I have wanted it that way. I could have grown it. I mean, we have about 350 to 400 attendees come every year. I could have grown it to a 2,000 person event. I could have. But my philosophy is about quality. It is about making people feel like they're part of our family, the Office Dynamics family. I can do a lot more creative things when I have a smaller group. I want to personally get to know every person who walks into our conference. So do you see what I'm saying? It's what is success to you? The other piece is the lifelong philosophy lifelong. So you might say, well, but I'm not going to work forever. It doesn't matter. It's a philosophy uh, that you have for your life that rolls into your five pillars, which I've talked about the five pillars, family or career, family, financial, spiritual, and wellness. So what does it look like in all those pockets? And in all those pockets, though, they're interwoven as well. Now, I know if you are of the younger generation or new to the profession, you maybe you probably don't have all of this figured out yet because you really figure it out as you go along in life. However, you still need to think about it. You still need to be strategic and especially because of the world we're in now. What else is strategy? It's having a real plan for your professional development. Is that just like, oh, I, I just feel like I want to take a webinar, you know, oh, I don't know, this one popped up and oh, well, you know, I need an hour break from my work. Your development should be strategically planned. You know, you look at your strengths, you look at your gap areas or the areas where you want to grow and you want to excel, you could look at, I will go through the five pillars in a moment, um, Danny. <clears throat> so you look at what, uh, you look at your executive's view. In other words, where do they think you need to grow? Do you have those conversations? This is not an annual performance review. This is a development review. And if you're not having those conversations, you know what, get into 2022 because it's time to have those kinds of conversations with your executives and your managers and not be afraid to have them. You deserve it. So you've got to have this real plan for where you're going, where you're growing, and then how you're going to approach that plan. What are your expected outcomes? What do you hope to happen? Then you're going to source who's out there. And, and a whole list of other questions, okay? I'm behind you. I want you to be proactive so that you have a stronger, better, more secure future. That's why I'm telling you these things. I care about you. All right, the next one, the strategy is about establishing your brand. Okay, hang on to your seats. Here are going to be some aha moments, and I'd like you to share your thoughts. So establishing your brand. I could spend an entire day on this topic alone. 
for years, since the beginning of office dynamics, I have talked about professional image. That's what we used to call it, professional image. Then it moved into perception management. And then we started talking about brand. Okay, and how many of you have heard of brand? I'm sure you've heard brand in terms of us, our personal brand. Well, interestingly, there is a section that I've had for years in our world-class assistant course. And it was on professional image and brand with emphasis on brand. Well, I recently had a work on that entire section in this course and pull out a bunch of stuff that I had in there, a bunch. Here's why. Going back to the playing field being even, remember I talked about that with dress and image and all of that? I won't touch that topic unless I am asked by an organization or individuals or there are assistants who are truly interested in professional dress in today's world, okay? I won't touch it because Everything goes today, everything. So where brand is moving to, what I wanna share with you is because I had to update this section, there's a whole section on here in my book, this course. I did a lot of research the last few months. Branding is a massive topic. This is where you can stand out. So I recommend you do your own research. But I'll share with you a couple quick tips. When we talk about brand, there's organic branding and intentional branding. So organic branding, I did this without realizing it when I was a secretary. I was just being myself but projecting a professional image and projecting you know, um, professional behavior and doing quality work. I didn't know others were observing me or watching me. Well, I did know it, but some people I didn't know were. And I ended up getting recommended to interview for a job for the CEO of a big bank in Memphis because someone was watching me. That's organic. I wasn't intentionally. I was just being me. There is intentional branding where you purposely say, this is how I want people to perceive me. And then this is how I'm going to play that out. The other thing that's really interesting and cool that um, I came up with in this new material is as far as branding now, it's more about things like energy, growth mindset, emotional control, positive attitude, focused. Those are brands, how we, we can brand ourselves. So it's not just on about dress anymore, okay? Um, what else do I wanna tell you? Cause I get excited about this. Um, so thinking about establishing that brand in your behaviors, in your communications. So how does your brand come through when you're writing emails? I mean, everything we do our behaviors, our actions, how we dress, our speech, it's all part of our brand. Are people perceiving you the way you want to be perceived? And this is more important than ever because of this whole blending in and the playing field being even. The other one, if you haven't heard me talk about this book, I love, 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 love this book, The Digital You. I've been talking about it so much. But this is what I want to share with you is the author. He talks about the three stages of building a powerful brand. I love this piece. And I have an assignment for you. So the three stages he talks about is stage one where we're undifferentiated. We're a commodity. We meet the need of what's required of us. The second stage is where we distinguish ourselves at work. That's how do you deliver extra value? 
The third one, this is the most important one, is where you are in demand. You are truly, you're truly standing out. And so how do you do that? You create a unique experience for those who you interact with. So I wanna challenge you and, and make this a homework assignment. What's your differentiator? When everything's across the board now, even playing field, what makes you stand out? What are your gifts? What are your special talents? And how do people know they exist? When you're living a more sheltered work life. If you're going to stand out, you're going to have to socialize. Oh, the author, sorry, I get so excited. Um, the author is William Aruda, A-R-R-U-D-A. And I keep this right on my desk. I refer to this so many times. I highly recommend you get that book. And no, I don't get any commission for selling his book, okay? I love it. Um, anyways, you're going to have to socialize. You're going to have to network on social media. I mean, again, where, where are people getting to know you and see who you are? Make connections. Meet people. Invite people to meet up with you. I just had someone do that a few months ago. Um, and I finally got to meet this lady last week for lunch. She is new to the Las Vegas area. She is a a speaker, a top speaker. She's an author. She's this incredibly smart woman who started up a company, Rise Up For You. She reached out to me and said, hey, we have this in common. I'd love to meet you. We met up for lunch. It was fascinating. It was great to have a new connection. And now I know we'll stay connected. All right, I better keep going because we've got to get to your questions. You have to be future focused. You just can't think about today. Tomorrow is going to come and your tomorrow will be your today. Display leadership skills. Anytime you take the lead in something, you're going to stand out. And then the, the last one I want to tell you is you've got to have excellent, 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 superior communication skills today. There are too many pieces moving. It's very complex. And then you have all these platforms, communication platforms, and then we have our devices, and then we have all these places we're communicating. You've got to be alert when you're, com when you're communicating. Be conscious. What's your intent for communicating? What do you hope to happen? Who is this person? What's your relationship? You know, we teach this in our STAR series. Do you need to pick up the phone? Do you need to have a Zoom call? Not just email or text because everybody else does that. You want to stand out? Start doing that today. So um, a couple other things that I want to share with you. I've covered a lot of territory. I know I have covered a lot. Uh, I want to go back. The most, I think, some of the critical pieces to stand out for you is the world of uncertainty, you know, that's got to motivate you. That should motivate you. Now, I'm not saying that means you should live with discomfort and fear every day. Just know that this is why you want to stand out. This is why you've got to take some control. This is why you have to be proactive, right? Remember the proximity bias. I would also say, Remember what I said about the even playing field. That's important. So here's what I would do if I were you. And I've already done this for myself. And I do it over and over. Begin working on your mindset. Before that action can follow, it's your thinking about this. If you're sitting there saying, yeah, it's okay. I mean, I don't. You know, it's really nice to stand out, but I don't need to stand out. I'm a happy camper. I work from home all the time. I have a good job. Everyone loves me at work. 
I get my annual raise. That's scary. That's a scary place to be. So change your mindset. We're in a different world, but it can be invigorating. It can be exciting. Don't buy into all the negativity that's happening around us, you know? So change your mindset. Change it to, yes, I want to stand out. I want to have a good future. I, you know, uh, I want my family to be proud of me. I want to be proud of me. I want to land on my feet. That type of thing. I want to give my best. I don't want to blend in. I want to be known for my great work, my great talents, my contributions to the world and to your workplace, right? That's a good thing. Also, you are never too old to change your mindset. I'm probably the oldest of all of you in this webinar. <laughs> and I'm here to tell you, you are never too old to change your thinking. You can be 90 and still change your thinking. The next step, mentally prepare for discomfort. What I've talked to you about today, it's going to put you, some of it, in an uncomfortable place. But no, that's how you grow. And when you grow and you evolve and you become better, you stand out. And when you stand out, people are going to want to hilarious. You know, I'm a really strong, experienced speaker and trainer. I can honestly say that after 32 years, but I still try to keep learning what I can do that will take it up another notch. And then discuss your plans, you know, with your key executive, you know, the key person you support, let them know what you're thinking, let them know what, you know, you want and how they can support you. So. Uh, really quick, Malia, because I know we're going to get to questions in a minute. So please stay on. Just give me two minutes, if you would, to just let you know, because the special, special offer. Um, I just got this information last night from Emory, our sponsors. And again, you're wondering, what is this? Maybe you don't understand when I say software. Um, Malia and I have been using Emory. It's a wonderful, wonderful platform there's also an app for it and it's really where executives and assistants privately can communicate tasks projects priorities you can flag them you can check off when they've been done when they haven't been done and so forth but here's the offer let me tell you about it and i oh i did want to share it with you if you'll also bear with me again for a moment i'm going to get to your questions in one minute um i just want to show you this because i'm a show kind of girl so they have this wonderful incredible offer for you right now um well let me read this emory has an exciting offer for everyone on this webinar as a pre-launch special emory is giving away for free the assistant pro version of their software for life for 500 assistants. And it, it's not just you on the webinar. You're getting this um, notice before everyone else is. This is going to go public in a few days. So if you want to be in that, that group of the first 500 and get this free for life, what you need to do, let's see, to get this deal, simply go to emory.com slash Joan Burge, which is what I have up right now for you. Sign up for the free trial. Then you need to email the founder and CEO, Don. So it's Don at emory.com. In the subject line, write assistant pro free for life. Now you may not remember all of this, so don't worry because we will put it in um, your certificate email. But I just want to make sure you all heard about this. I'm really, really, really excited about this because I don't know of any other software that has been developed for an executive and assistant. 
I'm not aware of any. And I pretty much know what's going on out there for you folks. So anyways, there it is. All right, let's get to question. Oh, hold on. So how is Emory different from sharing OneNote or Teams? It is, it is different. And Sarah, I can't go into the whole spiel on it. Um, I would definitely say uh, write Don. If you will write Don at emory.com, he will be more than happy to talk to you, to explain it. He'll go on a Zoom with you. He'll show you what it does. Just check it out because it is not the same. This is solely for just you and your executive. It's very um, private. Anyway, I can't go into all of that. But what are, we'd like to start a book club with the book. Woo. All right, so Malia, go ahead. We better go on <laughs> to questions. Alicia, I maybe we share this there. with others yeah. outside this webinar. Um, I know it's for our webinar listeners. Uh, so goodness, you better write Don about that. <laughs> okay, Malia, go ahead. Hi. Hi. Oh my goodness, a lot going on okay. in today's webinar. I know, and you are full of energy. Oh, yeah, well, of course, it's been what a month. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, so Lisa would like to know how would you prioritize your development to be most marketable? So one, one thing I know, I would make it broad. What do I mean by that? Uh, so the idea is you don't want to be so focused and so niched that you miss out on potential job opportunities and the administrative role is very broad today uh it really is your project managers your information flow people again don't just stay and that's the problem with the pool if anybody goes into a centralized kind of administrative thing you're focusing on a few different kinds of uh utilizing different kind a few skills you don't want to do that that's dangerous so take on different assignments um you want to develop different skills if you were to put together a resume or a career portfolio you want to show that you have a breadth of experience that you've been involved in different things that you've developed different skills so that positions you better than an assistant who is solely you know, stayed in the very core administrative capacity. Um, so that for sure I would do um, as far as my development, looking in, you know, what, depending on how you want to grow, if you want to evolve into a very high level executive assistant, if you're not working for those C-suite people and you want to grow into that, what skills do you need to develop to be able to make that move um, and get into that position? So that's another thing I would do. And then I would look at the trends. Like if you just follow office dynamics, I'm we're always out there. I'm telling you what the trends are, what you need to be learning that other assistants don't realize they should be learning or even other training companies who teach admins don't know you should be learning because they're not future focused. I'm looking at your future and where this profession is heading and I want to put you ahead of the game. Okay. All right, next. Thank you. Um, let's see. Karina would like to know, when you were discussing tackling your career, you mentioned focus on your goals and getting what you want. But what if you don't know what you want from your career? What suggestions mm -hmm. do you have? Wow. Well, and I know that's that's really hard, like when you do you use to do that? So let's say I love event planning. Well, it's really what are the skills I get to use when I'm doing event planning? I get to be creative. Um, I to, to have fun, to uh, think of ways to provide a great event. So I, you think about the skill behind the task because then you can also think about what kinds of positions would you be able to use those skills in <clears throat> that? I hope that makes sense. Um, I would also consider, well, how many years do you want to work? Um, 
are there particular industries or businesses? Like I always wanted to work. I always stayed in the corporate world. I love the corporate world. I did not want to work in small businesses. Whenever I did, it just didn't work for me. I like that big corporate feeling. I knew there were certain departments. I didn't like legal. I didn't want to be in accounting. I hated that. I loved marketing. So you could start to think about what departments within a company do you think you would like to work in based on the work or the kinds of skills you would use? What level of people do you want to move up the ladder within the profession? And if so, and achieve those certain titles, do you want to achieve a designation? Um, just start putting ideas down on paper. They don't have to be orderly. Uh, think about your personal goals. You know, and, and if you're married, you know, you have to take that into consideration. Do you have children? You know, and, and then start to figure that out. And there are some really good books out there, too, that you could search for um, that could help you figure out how to determine your career. It, it's some of these questions I could spend a half hour on, so I'm trying to do the best I can to make it uh, quick. Does Ms. Birch have a video library to revisit a webinar? Yes, really quick, I'm answering that one. Yes, if you go to our website, right, Malia, we have our past recorded webinars. Yeah. Okay, another oh, question. Dynamics.com and then webinars. Um, Thank you. Okay. Uh, let's see, Courtney would like to know, how can one have exceptional communication skills when others don't communicate back? especially if a higher up you are if a higher up you are assisting if it's a higher up sorry that a higher up person who's not communicating That's what it sounds like. with you i guess yeah, yeah. Yes. and that i know that happens i know that and we can only do so much ourselves and then it is up to the other person i know malia you know there's numerous times she has issues here you know communicating she'll continually email somebody maybe uh you know that we need to get information back from and they don't respond to her well sometimes then i have to get on the phone <laughs> that's not good but um <laughs> True right story. True so story. if they won't here's the other here's the other caveat caveat that you can use with anyone when you don't get the response you want change up the way you do something so if what we're doing is not getting someone's attention, don't keep doing the same thing. Do something else that catches them off guard, that maybe that will get their attention. Do you see we're in a very distract in another fashion? And then if that doesn't work, there isn't a lot. Again, we can't make other people change. If it is starting to affect your work, though, and in your product, you're going to have to somehow figure out how you actually can talk with that person and have that, you know, courageous conversation. Okay. Um, sorry. All right. So Kim, um, Kim would like to know she's looking for classes on workplace mental health and wants to know if you have any suggestions. Uh, I just know that there are a lot of courses out there now. A lot of webinars are available. This is a focus um, for organizations to really talk about employee well-being and helping employees with information to support well-being in the workplace. And mental health is actually a huge topic now because of everything we've gone through the last two and a half years. Yes. So I don't have a particular place I could drive you right now, but I, I know I'm always seeing things come in newsletters to me, you know, from the Human Resource Association and so forth. Just Google that, <laughs> as they say, and I know there will be plenty of resources available. Yes, absolutely. Dee would like to know, how do you make, sorry, how do you make your priorities your executive's priorities? It's you really have to have those honest conversations. So many assistants, and rightly so, are afraid to sit or, and to me, it's sit face to face 
not having a Zoom or a telephone call. Body language adds so much when you're, I mean, and when you're in that same area together, but so many are afraid to have that serious conversation. And helping an executive understand why your priorities are important. You know, a lot of them don't get it. And in fact, I've divulged this already, and I don't know if you know, but we have a book coming out in October. It is launching. It is for executives on how to utilize an assistant, how to work with an assistant, why you folks are so important, what is your significance and why they need to utilize you, and also uh, tell them what you need from them to be successful. Well, you need to have that conversation. So they just a lot of times don't understand and therefore they don't, they don't realize that as your priorities being as important. But if you're gonna have a partnership, you have to have those conversations. Now that's, again, that's a whole nother class. How do you have that conversation? What do you say? What do you do? I mean, we teach that in our Star Achievement course, 12 ways, 12 steps to giving upward feedback. And we practice it in class. So I can't give you all those 12 pieces right now. Maybe that's gotta be another webinar. Um, but we probably also have some blogs about it and so forth. It's bottom line, you have to have a real conversation about it, but it's how you have the conversation. It's you're serious and you're coming across strong conversation. You always want to hear their view, what they thought about it. Okay. okay. I'd like uh, one more. Yes. One more. Oh. Were you looking at something? Sorry. Yeah, I was just looking at somebody said that she's blocked from Emory. How does she sign up? So I'm not sure I understand that. Um, and what I would suggest um, is to write Don at Emory.com mm -hmm. if you're having any issues because it should be okay. All and right. If, if, you if you don't get through, um, just shoot me an email and I'll connect you with Don. Okay. Okay. Oh, really quick. Mm -hmm. um, because I noticed we have like a minute left. Uh, I just wanna tell everybody what's on the horizon because we have some exciting things for you. Um, and then we, I'll take another question. So yes, the new book will be at conference, Anna McLeese. Yes, it is our kickoff. It is the launch of our book. And I have to show you because I am so excited and I'm so proud. There's the cover of the book. Okay, it is real. And I wrote that book with another executive, a CEO, a business owner, an entrepreneur. So it's going to be incredible. All right, August is my birthday. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. So we are going to do some something special. I don't know what it is for you because there's nothing I love more to do for my birthday than give, give gifts to you. So check your inbox. Um, conferences in October. Woohoo! And we have a lot of in-person people, a lot of people coming in person this year. It's going to be awesome. We're going to have the new book for executives. And we're going to need your help on that one. And we also have a new virtual uh, series. It's live virtual series coming out the end of October brand new, it hasn't been announced yet, called Significant Power Skills. And that's going to be with Julie Reed, our one of our elite trainers. She has constructed this amazing course um, that you can take advantage of. It's seven weeks, 90 minutes each. But anyways, and then we're going to have the holidays and we're going to have lots of cool things and we're going to have more free webinars for you. So just keep following. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. So first of all, you have got to buy the book for your executive <laughs> as a gift. Um, for sure. Like seriously, you know, when you have an executive who's never had an assistant and they don't, you know, they don't understand the value you can bring. So I'll have to give you the quick answer because again, it's really a book, um, but the idea is you have to communicate 
your value. In other words, let them know what you can bring to the table, where you can help them, how you can help them. I mean, they have no clue what to do. So you're going to have to educate. You're going to have to train them. Um, it's going to take time. You're going to have to follow through on what you, you say you're going to do because they're going to have to build trust with you. We don't build trust overnight. So as they see what you're capable of doing, what you can handle, how you're making their life easier, so make sure you do that, they'll start to build trust. And, and in time, then trust leads to more delegation. So that's the short answer. Um, I know we're out of time, so... Uh, I hope that gets you started. Again, look around our website. There may be some articles I've written or blogs, all kinds of information. So I thank all of you for being here today. Thank you for taking this time. Remember, stand out from the crowd because you're awesome. And I hope to see you next month. All right. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. Since I took it off, um, oh, I don't know, a, a minute. Just close the right here.